Hi everyone, welcome to a special show of Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews. I've got an old guest with me, he was with me quite a while, Dirk McClure, how are you doing mate? Good, good, it's good to see you, it's early. It is for you, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 5 or 6 a.m. out there for you? It is 6 a.m. in Kansas City on a Sunday uh, and it's daylight savings time so it feels like 5 a.m. So you've oh. caught me before I usually get up on a weekend and before I go to church. I'll go to church later this morning, but before that, you're going to take me to the Church of Iridium. So <laughs> looking forward to this. And of course, now you're back for a second time. You're officially an Iridia. I hope that you're all right with that. So, you know, I hope you're all right with that. But yeah, you're back. You're back for a second show. Now, last time you came on, mate, we spoke about Michael Sweet and Reborn, Reborn Again, Reborn Again um, album that he... Uh, re-released basically it was and obviously the backstory behind that as it it came out as a striper album it was originally a michael sweet album he released it and that was the last time you were on and now we had to talk about strike themselves so, that's correct um, yeah that was a good a, time that was probably about four years ago yes was it that long ago i think so oh my god i'm sorry right okay acousticized mate this is what we're talking about yeah, this is it. This is it. So, talk us through this, um, Dirk, and and how it came about, and the actual, you know, the only way you can get hold of this, this album, or so, Blu-ray and DVD. This I will address an elephant in the room right out of the gate. Uh, this is only available as a physical copy, and it's only available on their website striper.com and at the time that we are recording this uh, March 10th of 2024 I went on their website and I realized they are currently out of stock for both the DVD version and the Blu-ray version uh, each version also comes with a music CD and they are going to be restocking this eventually and it might have a little bit of a different format. I'm not sure what that's going to be. It hasn't been announced yet. May might be the same thing. Might have a different name. Might have a little bit different with the pack things going on with the packaging. So it is going to be back. So if somebody is interested in looking at this and they go and they see that it's out of stock, I'd encourage them to check again and see. Now I just a quick. We won't linger on this. This might be one for an actual show, but. That way of releasing, I haven't got a problem with that whatsoever. I, mm -hmm. You know, we, we all know what the, you know, Spotify, um, Amazon Music, we all know what these, what the artists get for people streaming these. And if it was all the time and it was only physical releases, you know, but it's, it's now and again they do something, a lot of bands do something like this, a lot of special release. People mm -hmm. get, I know people get a bit upset with that, but it's not often done, and I can't blame bands. I mean, uh, Striper do what other bands are doing. They have like a a special membership, don't they? Which you can, which you can like uh, get special stuff from online. You can talk to them and stuff like that. They do all this extra stuff outside of the normal releases, don't they? That's correct. They have a fan club membership. Mm -hmm. uh, there's different tiers that you can buy into. I mm -hmm. buy into one of the middle tiers, which is called All for One. And uh, they they're constantly releasing comment content. They're doing chats. There's special videos or things like that. It's something they started during the pandemic, I think, out of probably pure necessity. And they've just kept going. And it's a way to stay connected and for them to give back with their to their fans. It's something I've enjoyed. And I'm like you. I I have a Spotify. You know, I I listen to a lot of music on Spotify, but I love physical media. I love to actually own something it bothers me the fact that you know nobody know, owns anything anymore it's all only through subscriptions in your case i understand all the ground you cover with all the bands it's really the only way but if there's something special like this i like to own it regardless of what band it is when when i can no uh, and, and no that that's really cool and I, I think you know i've got some albums behind me some of them have been sent to me some of them are bought at when I've been going to a fair and stuff like that, but no, you're totally right. And uh, you know, uh, people do get criticized for the other part of it, don't they? Only Spotify and stuff like that. But 
in myself, I suppose I'd make myself feel a bit better for uh, you know, promoting bands, especially new ones as well. <laughs> but there is a bit of guilt behind it. But to tell you the truth, you're totally right, um, Dirk. I, I, I probably cover about 200 albums a year. I couldn't afford to buy 200 albums. So my wife would kick me out of the house if I bought 200 <laughs> albums. Um, but, you know, and, and bands herself, there's a necessity. People just think, oh, Striper, you know, they were big in the 80s. They don't need it. People don't understand the reality of the um, how much it takes to tour um, and all those things that go with it and releasing, doing a release. You know, if they didn't do any of this stuff, they probably wouldn't be able to survive. So you wouldn't have a striper. So, you know, uh, it, it, people forget that sometimes. You talked about packaging. We could have a quick run through before we go track by track sure. about the packaging itself. Now, I've got one. Well, no, listen, this sounds like a gripe. It's not really, but it's where I'm old. <laughs> I can't. On this, on the thanks to everyone, mm -hmm. I, I find it really hard to read some of that because I'm old. Uh, I've got a, it, it's just, it's, it's the, you know, the, I can if I, if I can, if I go quite far away, I, like, you know, a certain distance, I can, I can read some of it. I have to be in a good light though. See, it's <laughs> so, but yeah, that's just a, and, and, and a little moan I've got, it's not a moan, but, this was something that people are experiencing. This was stuck. This part of yes. it was stuck. Mm -hmm. now, I, I, and it's quite funny because um, it's glue. There's this like glue that you can you can peel away, and it's it's stuck. I think it's stuck to the Perry bit. It at was the back, at the back there. So this is stuck to that with um, some of that glue. And I got them all off. And the last one, which did the same to someone else, tore a little bit of. Uh, Aussie's hair. Oh, uh, that's a bummer. Okay. And I really yeah, like I, that. I, I couldn't have taken longer to do it because I was thinking, I know this happened to someone online, and I don't want to. I don't want the same thing to happen to me. And just and it just tore a little bit off the off the finger. So <laughs> I had the same observations, and I'll double tap on that briefly. I thought it was a little bit awkward the way it was glued and I read online oh yeah those are it's meant to be removed so I was able to remove it without oh, good, uh, anything good. coming off the image but yeah it's meant to <laughs> actually come off the the photography I think really it looks fantastic the guys yeah. with the yellow car and everything but yeah. I agree with you about the um print being so small and hard to read i'm i'm an old guy i got readers so it's not unusual for me to break those out but yeah e even with the readers you're really having to just dial in there to see what's going on so it's probably more the complaint that we're old more than <laughs> the actual <laughs> but um, yeah uh, you right. also didn't do the lyrics this time like they sometimes do but that's i mean that's okay yeah. these were not original songs no, it's probably something that is usually left off of a live product to teach truth, isn't it? Lyrics. But very cool product indeed. It looks very cool. Like you said, the photos are excellent. Um, I think, you know, I wonder if Mike, I don't know if Michael will watch Michael and the band will watch this, but I think they used a bit of a filter on there. They look very young in that photo on the front. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. They're, I think I think they just I don't know. You've got a little bit of a filter going on there, I reckon. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind a filter now and again for myself, to tell you the truth, if I need it. Um, no, they're aging better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Henry, Henry. So um, there is, sorry, I haven't even counted them up. Is it 10 tracks? Mm -hmm. 11 tracks, by the looks of it. 11 tracks. Um, and they're all recorded live, aren't they, at Spirit House? The usual live recordings that they've done. They Now, just, just remind me, Kurt. They done even devil, even the devil believes they did the whole album in Spirit House mm -hmm. and as well. They did um, to hell with the devil as well, didn't they? Uh, the the live version of it, yes. The live version. They did one mm -hmm. of those, and and uh, I watched that actually on Amazon Prime the other day. It's hell with the devil, and that was very cool. Um, yeah. But but yeah, so this is all done in Spirit House again, isn't it? The, from from the start to finish, it's all Spirit House. As well as a number of their recent studio albums they've recorded at Spirit House. Yeah, they yeah. really, and we can probably kind of go ahead and delve into the production a little bit. Um, yes. This was, the music was produced by Michael Sweet. Uh, Michael and Lisa Sweet were the executive producers. 
Danny Verdini and Paul McNamara were uh, just just regular producers for the album. Danny has been their mixer and their engineer on a number of projects, mm -hmm. and they they've just really hit a rhythm and a flow. They are very dialed in on that process, and they have yes. that working relationship. Uh, Paul McNamara, who owns the facility. He typically produces those albums, and I thought it was kind of interesting. I did see a credit where he did some organ and key playing on this project as well. That was, you know, off screen. You'll see him on the video. And then uh, you had uh, Ian Neal as their technical assistant. You know, it's, it's funny you should say that. We're going to get onto the tracks, but it's funny you say that. I, I On one song, I did notice keyboards, and I was thinking, it was quite in the distance. I was thinking, is that... It'd be funny when we get to the tracks. I mentioned the track, and I definitely thought I heard keys. Whether you can um, confirm that for me, but no, it's a very cool sounding album as usual. Everything that they produce, the studio albums, these live spirit house albums, very the clarity. And this is obviously a Blu ray, yours is a Blu ray as well. And mm -hmm. I mean, the, the quality is you know, the picture quality, obviously, being a Blu ray, and the sound qualities, and you can really hear, especially being an acoustic album. You know, it's very that isolated feel, isn't it? If, you know, these stripped down versions, you can hear every little note, you know? I I really thought it was a fantastic production. Mm. You know, the idea of doing an acoustic album or an acoustic live show, it really seemed to me to get really popular back in the 90s when they had the MTV yeah. Unplugged show. And it mm. it's almost just sort of a box that a lot of bands that have been locked around long enough they eventually want to check off doing a, yeah. a live acoustic album so it is something i mean i was looking forward to it i wouldn't say i was off the wall excited about mm -hmm. what it you know what it was going to sound like i will get into this as we get into the songs i i ended up liking this a lot more than i thought i would and as you said there's really no room for error when you're just playing those chords you know, and you've got less yes. production going on there. You can really hear the vocals. They, they have to be really dialed in on that. Oh, music. Yeah. Not everybody translates well from a studio album to a live performance. And when you're talking about a live acoustic performance, you're taking that to a whole nother level. Totally, totally agree. It's very stripped back. Um, it does... And I'm the same as you. It's, it's cool that you mentioned that. I was thinking, should, should I say something? Because I'm not always one of these people that uh, I'd rather have new music from a band rather than retread old music, you know? I mean, they're talking about doing the, the Striper, um, another one of their songs, aren't they, where they covered, what was it called? The one where they covered their own. Or the, cover, the Second Coming, where they redid their songs. That's it. Yeah, not the cover yeah. of the Second Coming. I think they're doing another one, aren't they? But. I'm like, no, just give us new music. I mean, that's 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 what I want to hear. But I've got, I'm the same as you. I was really intrigued, and and some of these songs took a bit of a life of their own, being acoustic for sure, because they don't hold back on which we get on to. Some of them for me came across better than others. Some of them, are, you know, I'm not saying there was a, there's one or two that I actually preferred in this in in acoustic. But I'm such a big fan of all the songs on the album that, mm -hmm. you know, it, that was unusual because I was thinking, how can they be better? But I think some of them came across better, some of them not so well. But we'll obviously get on to that. Um, yeah. Just the performance in general, though, mate. I mean, Michael Sweet sounded amazing. I, 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 I tried to play... I tried to play one note on the guitar and sing at the same time. It's impossible. I mean, when you're watching him do... I'm just like in awe of Michael Scott. Yeah. His, his vocals sound sound really spot on on, on this album, on this album, for sure. Some of the screams, he's not going for the screams so much because that's not what acoustic is about either. Sometimes, you know, you know what I mean? But um, the control he's got on his voice and stuff is just amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The vocals were very strong on this album. I'm not even going to say that on every song because. It applies to every song, but yeah, they, it was really fantastic. And I mean, we're obviously going to go through the, the songs and talk about each purse, each one of the, the guys in the band, but they're all just top notch musicians. And mm -hmm. what you can really overall, and I will mention this in each song that 
the backing vocals on this, mate, that you can hear from Perry and Oz are just outstanding. They almost take a life of their own on this acoustic album. The three and two part harmonies on this were oh. really good. You know, the drumming, I will say, is very dialed in. It yes. was different to me to see Robert. He's such a high performance yes. drummer to see him just playing mm. on a project. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's, you know, and he he's he's the oldest of the band members. And I mean, he's just he's still got it. I yeah. saw Foghat live a few years ago and they've only got one original member still and it's their drummer. And he's 10 years older than Robert. So that gives me hope that we've got some, <laughs> some great years left. With Striper. Yeah. Now, he's a he's not a super high performance no. drummer. He just kind of plays the, yeah. the guy from Foghat. But yeah. Yeah. So bet, the, the drumming bet, was great. The, I bet mean, he was like, farce, yeah. He was, you could tell he was like, <laughs> he was like trying to, because he had to, didn't he? It's acoustic. He, if he was bumping, he probably wouldn't be able to hear anything else. But you could tell he's like dialing it in a bit. But yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great um, drummer. I mean, they all done fantastic. And, uh, and of course, with the production, you get, uh, as usual, what they've done with it, especially since Perry's been in the band. His bass has been right up in the mix, including mm -hmm. this as well. I they all have solos on this, Michael, Oz, yes. and Perry. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll get into that. But yeah, they they sounded great. I thought I, I thought I would like it. I was really surprised how much I liked it. I agree. I'm, I would I'm say generally I'm totally speaking. With yeah, yeah. I'm totally with you on that. It's a lot of more. It's very surprising. I, I would say that. I know that some people have, a, have had a dig at them. I've seen it online about doing an acoustic album. And it's old date. It's out of date now doing that. But like you said, sometimes it's about getting that done. They've done it and it, it's come out brilliantly, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so there is there is a little bit of a tiny little chat at the beginning of the video, isn't there? But not you don't get that. In between songs, I was, I was thinking there might be that stuff going on between songs, but they literally, from song to song, don't they? They just it, it just blasts out there on on the on the Blu-ray. Um, you want to go song by song, mate? Sure. Yeah. Cool. If you um, well, if you want to kick off each song, and then I'll I'll dial in with my little two pennies worth. Absolutely. So we they start out with that little introduction verbally and then it's all business as you mentioned it oh, is yeah. just song to song to song to song the first song is you know what to do and i've got to say just as a general statement i really liked the selection of <clears> songs <throat> on this album you had a number of uh, classic striper songs that translated well acoustically but they did not neglect their more modern catalog you know, yeah. that, that is, in my opinion, is very strong. I thought it was a great mix of the two and the selections in general, I, I really liked. Uh, something that just struck me right off the bat, and we talked about it before, I'm not gonna talk about it on every song, but how strong the vocals were yeah. on this project. Uh, Michael's voice has changed a little bit um, over the years, but I mean, he's, still got it he can oh, yeah. still hit those notes still hit those ranges i mean he just hasn't lost a beat uh it, i saw i was surprised to see in the credits just two people credited as cameras because it seemed like there were multiple cameras mm -hmm. shooting this i mean you saw uh that's more of a production comment but you saw multiple angles yeah. if you're watching it uh on on the video uh, you could really hear the solos on this one. This first one, Oz has a solo. Uh, it just, when I see him doing that and the intricacy, it just blows my mind because he had that, um, some well-publicized health challenges a number of years ago. And, you know, he had brain surgery. They actually woke him up during the brain surgery and he played his guitar and it was part of the process to make sure that, you know, that, that uh, it was going well and he was retaining that function, which is just mind-blowing to me no pun intended um oh, that, that they Sorry. do that Sorry. so uh and it, again it just it's out there and there's there's just no room for error so those those were my comments on the first song i mean i'm, I'm gonna sort of talk about how i think they transform 
acoustically, each one of these yeah. songs. And this one I did really, really transform well. And it's one of these, it's a bit of a rocker, isn't it? So you, it's a bit of an unknown how it's going to be when you hear it. Um, obviously, the backing vocals, I mean, I know I've mentioned that, but they just sound amazing on this song. It, uh, I, this is, I mean, remember the Yellow and Black Attack wasn't the best produced album either, was it? So to hear it, you know, like this is completely different. Mm -hmm. I know Michael is adding some almost bluesy touches to some of his vocal style on this one, which I liked. He's like, you know, where it's a bit more mellow and less metal, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, very slightly, but uh, like you mentioned, Oz solo was brilliant. And almost some of these solos found, sound almost the songs themselves almost sound like, because they're acoustic, almost flamenco type music, isn't it, at times? Very cool. Very cool indeed. But yeah, you know what to do. It's a great style. Um, and then we move on to the next one, mate. Yeah. So Soldiers Under Command, going in, just taking a quick scan of the songs on this album, this is probably the one that I was the most skeptical of, them being to tr translate um, acoustically. Uh, and... I feel like they did it. And the album in general is very, it's very rocking and it's very moving mm -hmm. for, it moves along for an acoustic album. You usually yeah. think of acoustic just very stripped down. They mm -hmm. sometimes slow it down a little bit. That was not the case here. They just really went into it and uh, really, really went after it. Uh, and it's, it's a powerful song when they play it live uh i i was surprised in a good way how powerful it was to hear that acoustically what'd you think so uh, i have I, I think it transformed okay acoustically but i was wary just like you and and i sort of think that for me it transferred the the least best acoustically. okay but that wasn't a surprise to me because of the song Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm not I'm not surprised it wasn't on the disc, and I'm not saying it's bad in any way because they perform each one of these songs expertly. But the actual transform transformation from you know a real metal track, it didn't work as well as everything else on this disc, but it still was good. So you know yeah. that just shows you the quality of it for me. Um, but the solo, which is one of the best solos, I think. Uh, Stripers, one of the best solos. I think it transformed really well. They even added in the little bits where they like go join in with the twin lead parts and all that, which you know they could have missed those out. They could have changed it, but it, the, the solo was very cool. But yeah, for me, like I love the song. It's one of you know I can't even think if I did the top striper songs. I might have even done the top striper song, but I think it would be in them as you know the original version, but. I think it was really good, but just for me, transformed the least best out of all. But that's still fair. Brilliant. Yeah, but still I brilliant though. Still you really know? liked it, but yeah, it was it was one of the more different ones. It definitely was, and, and you know, I was worried, but I didn't need to worry. They did it brilliantly, but you know, probably my least favorite on the actual album, which is, but he's one of it's probably one of my my favorite songs of all these songs in the, the original yeah. format. Okay. So so next you had uh, No More Hell to Pay, the first uh, job that they, project that they pulled from their more modern mm. catalog. And I listened to this, the first time that I listened to it, it was at the world premiere in um, Springfield, Massachusetts. And it was actually, you know, I was in a room with the guys and we played the, uh, they played it on a big screen. And th so that was a, a amazing experience. But then I listened to, I listened to it many times in my car um, one time on my motorcycle, it passes the Harley test, by the way. And uh, <laughs> then I listened to it. I watched it for a second time last night and actually put the lyrics up while I was watching it. And something that struck me is how obviously they're classic songs. I, everybody loves their classic songs, myself included. They're very simple, mm -hmm. the lyrically, and they've yeah. grown so much musically. I, their new music and this song in particular, it's a very strong song lyrically. And uh, this one, it, it worked for me on the, on the transfer to uh, acoustic. It, it definitely worked for me. And I think 
it's a bit strange. It's quite a slow song in its original format as well, isn't it? It's a really heavy song, but it's quite almost slow to medium paced song. It's a real like I love this song. It's it's just one of my favourite striper songs ever. Um, and it almost where it's a slow song anyway, and it transfers to acoustic. It's almost ballad esque because it's quite slow. Um, I I felt the emotion really came through. You yeah. know. Yeah. in a way that, you know, rivals the original, maybe yeah. even more so, just when they really slow it down. And they're, no, they not yeah. necessarily slow it down, but, you know, when you really hear that unfiltered and you hear those words and those songs, yeah. and, you know, it, it was powerful. I definitely agree. I think this is uh, really good. And it, it, there's a point in here where he didn't scream and he made exactly the right choice. And we know he can still scream, but in this setting... To, to you know not do that is totally the right choice by Michael Sweet um, and of course the brilliant solo as well it's one of the best solos they've done as well I mean they've done tons mm -hmm. of brilliant solos haven't they but this is a very good one as well yeah so this next short this next track is an interesting one mm -hmm. go for it mate make you mine uh, it is one of the ones on there to me it sounded more similar to the original mm -hmm. than a, a lot of the songs did, which was nice. Uh, there's a nice guitar solo by Oz. You see the three-part harmonies on this project. They're all singing and you can hear it. And, uh, you know, my wife actually watched it with me. She's very musical. She teaches piano lessons. All my kids play an instrument. I'm just, me, musically, I'm just more of a consumer. <laughs> I, I don't play, <laughs> but... She made the comment, I can really hear them vocally and mm -hmm. hear the harmonies better on the acoustic album than I, I can, you know, on the produced metal albums. And it was just, it was really nice to hear them. Yeah, I mean, I think this, I mean, the the, the Michael Sweet version is you know did the, the, the better production was obviously a step up from the original reborn album mm -hmm. version if you know what I mean um I think this is better acoustically um and, and a lot of it is to do with that the the production as we know on that reborn album wasn't the greatest was it when it when it came out it's, it's still you know it's not the drum sound and everything about it wasn't yeah. great um but yeah you can really hear the harmonies and uh, and I think it just really transformed nicely and actually improved the song and make you mine. A great, great choice. And it's nice to pick up a, a song out of an album not not is everyone's Striper's favourite album. You know, if you say, they're going to say Soldiers Under Command to Hell with the Devil or even some of the new ones, but that that part where they just, in that mid, that transition from what they are now, which is almost like a difficult period for the band by the sounds of it, you know, not knowing where they wanted to go and before they came back to their you know how they used to be um it's a great a great song i really really enjoyed it and probably the one of the songs i don't hear as much so it's nice to hear it sounded more fresh if you know what i mean yes cool. yes okay so next next we're at uh, loud and clear so it's back back to a classic song um this another challenging one i mean this is oh. a pretty rocking song and i had my wonders about this one it's the first Striper song I ever heard. So it's, uh, you know, it's a song that means something to me personally. I might like it more than the guys in the band do. <laughs> but uh, it, the, the song itself, I mean, uh, the acoustic version, one thing I really was skeptical of was that bass solo, that really yeah. thumping bass solo and how that would translate. That was a real big hook for me. The first time I ever heard Striper, the first Striper song I ever heard, I thought Perry pulled it off, and then it's followed immediately by a guitar solo with by Oz. I, I liked that as well. I thought this was really good as well. I think it transformed really well. Um, interesting listen as well. And I, I did notice I was listening to Oz a lot on this one when I was listening to this one because he, he's quite busy during the whole song, really. And you can hear him doing some great uh, playing all the way through um and like you said i i listened to the bass solo again this morning the original one mm -hmm. and you know it's quite funny you know, the, the obviously again we're talking about production and the, the the sound the stripped back sound which was on that original yellow and black attack album um 
But I mean, they've really up the ante on the bass sound, even though it's acoustic bass on this, it sounds great compared to that all the way back then. In 1980, was it? 84, wasn't it? Way back when. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Great, I think it was a great song that could have been, like you said, a risk, like a heavy song being a risk, but no, nah, great one. Mm -hmm. Next one, uh, mate? The next one is Lady, one of two mm. songs that we get from Against the Law. And this, it was, had an, an acoustic vibe on the actual song. So I would say this one is the most similar mm. to the original song on the entire um, album. I'm, I'm a big fan of Lady in general. I was glad to see this included. Uh, I've heard Michael joke around a lot about how he gets more requests from this song from men than he does from women which is kind of funny but it makes sense because it i it reminds me of my lady you know and i think that's yeah. the case you know for a lot of guys you can kind of just make that connection yeah. you know personally and emotionally and that sort of thing i i thought they nailed this one love this song i love the original song i love what they did with it here the the we've spoken i know we've spoken about harmonizing backing vocals but man in that chorus don't they sound just amazing on this all i would say is that on this on this version it sounded a bit more southern country sort of thing because of the acoustic guitars um, i know no, it's not a country song or you know but it had that feel for me on this um just just a great version of an already great song really brilliant okay now this one's an interesting one Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> so honestly, the ballad, Striper's biggest hit of all time. A lot of bands have a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. with their their big song. You know, some don't want to play their big song anymore, that sort of thing. Striper's never really been that way. They've always embraced this song in, in a beautiful way. I, I will say... As fans, I, I mean, I had, it's strange for me to say this. I mean, I had honestly was played in my wedding, so it, it means something to me. But I was talking to another Uber fan one time uh, from from New Zealand uh, and named named uh, Craig. And I said, I'm, I feel really strange saying this, but you know, the Striper song that I'm kind of over with and just without even hesitating, he's like, oh, yeah, honestly, mate. <laughs> and so I'm never disappointed when they skip honestly in a set that they're doing at a concert. I'd probably rather hear Lady or something else. Mm -hmm. So what what they did on this that I really liked is the fact that they changed the tempo on this. Yeah. They made it faster. They changed it up a little bit. And other, you know, and I think of there's another band that is uh le really leans into their faith called mercy me and they they i've noticed when they play their biggest song i can only imagine live they play a different version of it now they play mm -hmm. a faster version because it's just they've been playing it for so long mm -hmm. so they, they did change this in a good way it's it's probably if if you asked me what what my least favorite song on the album was it it might be this but i don't think that's anything to do with their performance i think it's just more kind of yeah. just me being a little over honestly but uh they they did a nice job with it great translation no i i go i go with you. I, I think it's this is a for me it's a better version i mean especially when i was growing up and not listening to striper in england you can imagine like you know you, you veered more towards the metal tracks than you know, than, than the ballads. And, I mean, all of me was on To Hell With The Devil, wasn't it, as well? It was. But that was even a little bit more sappier than, <laughs> than honestly. And I think the sappiness, if you want to call it that, I don't know if that's a bad word or not, but the sappiness from, honestly, I think is less of that in this version. Do you know what I mean? It was a little bit um, harder, if you like, and a little bit more emotional in a good way. I think that, it almost sounded like they transformed it into more of like a 70s style ballad with the acoustics. And yeah, I prefer this version uh, than, the, than the original. So 
I've never had a problem with honestly, Steve, truth. But, yeah. you know, it wasn't one of my, it'd be more than a man, more than, than honestly. But I, you know, yeah, honestly. yeah. <laughs> um, more than a man is my favourite strike. Oh, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, uh, next one, mate. Number eight. Calling on you. Um, oh, yeah. Got a little bias here. It's one of my favorite Striver songs. Love this song. Uh, yeah. We get a fantastic guitar solo by Michael on this. And I share your comments. I mean, I see him singing and playing and being a showman. He's just, I mean, he produced the, the music on this album. He just wears where so many hats and is just such a unique talent. It was mm -hmm. It was great to see that that standout moment come through on this song. I, I When it started this song, when, it, when I, I first played it on the Blu-ray, I was thinking, this ain't gonna, I don't think it's going to work. Mm -hmm. and when, it, when it first crashed in, I was definitely wrong. I, and I know it's because it's acoustic. It almost felt like a bit folky to me, the way there was, I can imagine him in a bar or something, just playing this, do you know what I mean? And, and it's just a great version. And of course, this is one of those ones, and it's one of those special Striper songs with the backing vocals have got to be just spot on, haven't they? They've got to be perfect, and man, they they, they really are good in this. Um, a great version of the great song, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, always there for you, the next one. One of the songs that's really more similar to the original, which... I've got to say surprised me because In God We Trust was such a heavily produced album, yeah. but it really came through. There was a sameness that, mm. that came through in this to me and, and a similarity to the original in, in a way that I didn't expect in, in a good way. Now, it's funny. I was, when I... When I first heard Always um, There For You, like way back when in 88, is it? 88, mm -hmm. God We Trust. I almost felt, yeah, I almost felt like it was the, a weaker version of Calling On You. Almost mm -hmm. like the same sort of that pop metal feel that, you know, they were going for. Um, and I still, still sort of feel that, sort of feel that way a little bit. But I, I think it, I love this version. In the acoustic version, and I, I do like the song "Always There for You," but I think they had even admit strive than they in "God We Trust" was almost like a they take what they did with "To Hell with Devil" and tried to emulate it, yes, a bit more, a bit more polished, you know what I mean? But but um, but this, it, I, I really like this. I, I think it just transformed, just like "Calling on You" did, really, really well into the acoustic um, versions. And another great version, I think, very cool indeed. Yeah. yeah, and I, and I, as a fan, I remember when in God We Trust came out, I felt the same way. It seemed like they kind of tried to emulate the To Hell With The Devil album with the songs. I mean, even in the order of the songs, they were different yes. versions of that song. And it's something that's been confirmed later in interviews that yeah. they did. They were under a lot of pressure, mm. you know, from, from the record company to, you know, do a successful album you know, that they could, you know, make a successful tour with and, Oops. you know, make all their loans back and all that great stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a little side rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> nah, very cool version, mate. What's your next one? Yeah, um, All for One uh, from uh, Against the Law. Um, mm. It To me, the note that I made here for myself, it was impressive to me how they really got the nuances and the sound of the guitar chords to transfer to the acoustic mm -hmm. on on this this project. It uh, that album had a little bit of a different sound yeah. in general, but it uh, it translated what particularly well to acoustic, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I love this song, man. Probably my favorite from the album. You know, from from the album itself, against the law. I just love this song. And, and I've heard Michael play it on live before, like with people been recording him on phones and stuff. I think I've heard him playing it on his own acoustically as well when he does his... I know you, you're looking at your track listing, aren't you? Because we missed one. 
Yeah, we did. We it's did. All right. we're, out of I'll, order. I apologize. That was I, a I, song I, on the album. No, no, we go back to the because it's got special ones to talk about anyway. But I, I thought you might have a different order or something. But it's fine. But Amazing Grace, isn't it? That we've yeah. Skipped I I skipped over Amazing Grace. I, that's all I, right. Mate, we've got plenty of time to talk about that. Don't worry about that. And that's the ones that people have been talking about, today, Drew. So I thought you might want to lead to last, but it's fine. We'll talk about that last. Yeah, I um, can't wait to see the comments when you post this. <laughs> um, so amazing grace backtracking i did i did skip one and uh it is uh it, it's a very beloved hymn um it it's this is going to sound sacrilegious when i say this it's not one of my favorite because <laughs> you just you just hear it again and again mm. and again and there's more versions of it i hear that i don't like than versions that I do like. And I it, you hear it a lot at funerals. And I've re actually, in my formal uh, uh, request for uh, my fu my funeral, my, my will, I've requested it not be played at my funeral, <laughs> actually. It, it's uh, so usually the, this song is meant to be slow and reflective. It is a beautiful song. They have done an upbeat rocking version of this song and i gotta say it works for me yeah. because the power and the meaning of the song still comes through but they've taken it and they've taken it up a notch and you know just the performance and the emotion it's all there yeah i mean you would have heard it a lot it's been around since 1772 or i've read about it yeah so <laughs> but um yeah obviously you know you've just said in here there's been lots of versions whether it's been elvis presley whoever it's been through the through the past and yeah they've done almost like for me this was like a bluesy gospel type version that's, mm -hmm. that's how, it, how it felt towards me but um i actually really i really like what they've done with this track i really i, I mean i'll probably i might prefer them doing a striper song you know what I mean? Just because I want to hear Striper. But yeah, I mean, I, there, there has been a lot of buzz about this song, though, isn't there? I've noticed. Yeah, there's more, I, more I, comments I, I really like that they that they included it. I just I liked what they did with it. I was uh, like the album itself. I was pleasantly surprised. I was not. I was looking forward to it. I figured I would like it, but I was not just bouncing off the walls, excited about it. And yeah. I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. And this this song just really fits right in for that. It really, really worked for me. A great version of a beloved hymn. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great song. And just that's track number nine, actually, isn't it? So um but you know, it's only a track order, mate. I wouldn't really worry about it. It's fine. Uh, we spoke we've spoken about every song. Just all the the all for one one, the, the closer is a great choice, I think. Just just closing on all for one. I think that they had a more has a more melancholy feel about the the acoustic version, although although the although the original had that sort of feel as well. Striper are brilliant at having heaviness as well and having like a melancholy, sad feel about. And I think it's the way they just play their guitars is a lot. Oh oh yeah yeah. Just kind of rolling through these last couple songs again. Just a couple other little comments. The always there for you. It's another one where the harmonies were really amazing and just sounded yeah. great with the strings. And on this last one that you just mentioned, um, all for one, the, the different acoustics, they were the pauses and the nuances and they really captured, mm. I felt the spirit of the original. That's a rock and song. And yeah. it, it translated better to acoustic than I thought it would. And I agree with you. It was a great choice uh, for a closer. We got, uh, solos by both michael and oz on that which, which is kind of fun to see that on the same song uh yeah. so great great way to to cap that off i mean correct me if i'm wrong they use there is actually acoustic guitar in the original as well because of that bit where they ding, 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 ding. i think that yeah is acoustic so it was almost like you know it's made to turn into this but it was also quite heavy and galloping the original as well so um no, and i know that's one of michael sweet's favorites although the album isn't one of his favorites obviously 
against the law. <laughs> you yeah, no. <laughs> <You don't like laughs> he obviously like he's chosen two songs off of it, so it can't be that bad, can it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, no, it's um so just to sum it up, mate, um a really, you know, worth getting. Totally, you know, for people that are unsure how it's gonna translate, I think they've done really well on this album, Striper. Yeah, I mean, if if you're kind of on the fence and wondering whether to buy it or not buy it, I I would say buy it. I uh, I I was uh, really happy with what they did with it, and I've I've listened to it many times already. Yeah, yeah, and, and the good thing about it, what a lot of people might feel the way we both felt about it, probably, is that. You know, do you really want an acoustic album from Striper? Is it something that you're really yearning for? But it might surprise people when they actually hear it and the isolation and the, and the emotion that runs through an acoustic version. Mm -hmm. It might surprise you. So, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. It, it, it felt like they were checking a box to, to me when it came out to do something acoustically, but it ended up being something really special. You know, similar to the way when they did, you mentioned Second Coming earlier. You know, in that case, they really were checking a box because they wanted to re-record those songs uh, to capture them back, you know, from Hollywood Records who owned them and was just kind of keeping them in a vault. But that ended up being something very special. Yeah. You know, it, it uh, to me, in many cases, that is it's has become my definitive version of those songs. So I, I wouldn't go quite that far with this one, but I'm really, really happy with how this how this turned out. Definitely. And I'll tell you what you don't, if you, if you do get it and you get the Blu-ray or DVD, what you do get, and I, it's something we haven't really mentioned, is the relationship with the band. I don't know if you noticed, mate, if, I know you've only watched, watched it two or three times. I think it was the last song. It might have been All For One or Always There For You. Michael and Oz, very emotional bit where they both look at each other and with what Oz is going through, what Michael's been through as well, there was this little thing where he looked at Oz, you know, quite for a long time, and Oz looked back at him. It was like quite a, it was quite a cool moment. Do you know what I mean? You're thinking, I'll have to go back and see that. Yeah. You know, you think about it; they're coming up on forty years, yeah. yes. which is just amazing to me. And there's there's bands that probably go on a little bit too long. Hmm. There, you know, movie sequels that go on too long there's <laughs> athletes that probably play a little bit too long but what what is mind-blowing to me about stripers that they've just they've still got it i mean yeah. they're still putting out great albums they're still doing great live performances and they're still surprising me with projects like this one i agree and i think when they say it's going to be the the final tour if you like they'll mean it i think do you know what I mean? And I, and I think that's probably why they haven't done it. They think they're not ready for that. You know, these yeah. people to do the final, final, well, and Kiss's final tour about 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah, Kiss's, uh, Kiss's farewell tours were usually just the farewell to your cash tour. I saw something <laughs> the other day that had a shirt that said, you know, Kiss farewell tour 2000. I was like, yeah, yeah. it took them another 24 years. <laughs> brilliant. Excellent, brilliant. Dirk, thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's been a, a real pleasure in having you on again. Um, Likewise, yeah. it's it's been my pleasure, my honor. Love love your show, show, especially love your reaction videos. But I, yeah, I appreciate the time and the opportunity to have a conversation with you. And thanks for getting up at five thirty, maybe. -ish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. Um, all you guys are there. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's know. Have you got the album? What do you think of it? Are you thinking of getting it? Have we made you get it? Let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you soon. And it'll be out again soon. I'm not being coy about it. I don't know exactly what kind of format or when, but it'll yes. be back. So keep checking. Cool. Cheers, guys. Thank you.